The train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. It's only just occurred to me that of all the names I've mentioned over the years, I've never once gone into any detail about Terence the Tractor. He was built in 1932 and arrived on Sodor that same year as trackside support for the Fire and Rescue Service. Basically, he was Mickey's partner. Aside from assisting with severe accidents, he often takes on a prominent role in the construction of rail-related infrastructure. The China Clay Pits, the SKR's expansion, and the Waterton Branch, he had been heavily involved in these and more. Though a hard worker with boundless dedication, I'm sure it hasn't escaped your notice he's a bit of a gossip. Over the years, he's cultivated an impressive network of contacts who keep him informed on a variety of topics. He's often quick to chat about these, regardless of their significance. The vast majority of the time, his information is accurate. The handful of times it hasn't been, he's always owned up and apologized. So why am I telling you all this? Well, this story takes place a few weeks before the Waterton branch was scheduled to open. By that time, Terence's services were no longer required so he headed over to the clay pits to conduct its annual safety inspection. This was when he revealed to us something very interesting. How many? Four. There are four engines coming to the island. Two for the Waterton branch when it opens, and two for the main line. One of the main line blokes is already here and is laid up at the works. That's a good sign. Who is it? He asked me not to say. He wants it to be a surprise. I don't know anything about the other one, only that he'll also be arriving today. As for the Waterton pair, they'll arrive a few days before the line opens. Oh, and Bruce, sorry things didn't work out with Daisy. I should have known you'd find out and gossip about it. Oh, I never gossip. What happened, Bruce? We broke it off. Oh, sorry, old boy. Ah, don't be. We didn't have a lot in common and decided to just be friends. Mutual breakup, eh? No question. There wasn't any fighting or anything dramatic. She's free to do what she wants. So look out, Edward. Excuse me? So it's true. She does have her eye on Edward. Yep. She said she's always liked mature gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I'm immensely flattered but not interested. She isn't my type. Green? Female. Why, Edward, you old heartbreaker. Every chance I get, Brian. No, 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 Brian! Hello, Edward, long time no see. Yes, it most certainly is. Fizzling fireboxes. Of all the chaps I never thought I'd see again, my word. How are you, old boy? Where have you been? Where haven't I been? We've got a lot to catch up on. How about you introduce me to your mates? Of course. Terence, Bruce, this is Brian. The Brian? The hero of Crosby? Oh, goodness. Has Edward been telling stories again? All the time, mate. And a good thing, too. Your actions deserve to be remembered, Brian. There was nothing special about it, Edward. I was just doing my job as a brake van of the Wellsworth and Sudbury Railway. Oh, no. Jesus. What's wrong? Oh, is this about the others? You don't have to walk on eggshells, lads. I know they're gone. You, you do? Aye, Colin and Lily, they were heroes, and Adam had a good run. He went out on his own terms. We should all be so lucky, I'll say. Oh, <sighs> that's certainly a relief. I would hate to be the one to tell you you're the last of your company. You just did, Edward. Yes, I did. Someone stapled my mouth shut. Don't worry, Edward. I'm too happy to be put out. I'm finally home. How did that happen? Eric, where'd you find him? He came in on James's goods train. The Yardmaster said he's been assigned to our branch, so I brought him over. But I guess it wasn't James's train since he broke down and had to be towed to Wellsworth. And you're never going to guess who did that. Who? Hello, Edward. Well, I'll be. Hello, Bogo. Welcome back. 
When did you get? Wait, have you been the chap laid up at Crovin's Gate? Yep, they wanted to have a crack at fixing me. Said they might have found a solution. I didn't believe them until they finished. I feel great. I didn't have a single problem coming along the line. No loss of power, no wheel slip, no engine splutter, nothing. I even managed to tow James without breaking a sweat. What happened, old boy? My flipping injector failed again. That's the thing that brings water from your tender into your boiler, right? Aye, when that goes, I can't make steam. I would have been stuck on the viaduct all day if you hadn't come by. Not such a useless buzzbox after all, eh? You never were. The men who built you were just idiots. We'll be glad to have you on the main line. Thanks, Bob. Bob? That's my name. But I thought your name was... Oh, wait! You said they call you Boko. I can't believe I didn't pick up on that. It's all right. I prefer Boko anyway. All right. Would anyone else like to share something about their names? My last name is Bond. In your dreams, Mr. Fleetwood. My middle name is Daniel. I thought it was Rupert. That's Douglas. Oh, right. How about you, Edward? What's your full name? Sorry, shouldn't I have asked? Lads? Lads? What's the matter? It's just a goods train. We were gawking at the train, Bob, but the engine pulling it. So you saw... Yes. Was it really? Yes. Does that mean... Yes! yes! My God, as if this day wasn't surprising enough. Hi, lads. Peter! Blimey! When did you get out? A few days ago. How do you feel? Better than I have in years. It's amazing how much you take freedom for granted. This place has short changed a lot. No signal boxes, eh? That's gonna take some getting used to. Is that to say this isn't a social visit? No, I've been reassigned here. They said the island will be getting a lot of fuel deliveries and I'm to help move them when that happens. I asked how and they told me about this new branch. That's what this lot is for. It's the first train I've pulled in 15 years. Looks like it's all in one piece. I guess you haven't lost your touch. That's good to know. I'm so happy to be home. It's great seeing you all again. And I think I speak for all of us when I say we're glad to have you back. No, Thomas, you do not speak for all of us. Oh, I see. I'll be on my way then. I'll talk to you later. What? Why did you have to say that? Why did you? How could either of you be so welcoming? Have you forgotten what he did? Nobody's paid for his crimes. We'll have to agree to disagree there. So if it was up to you, he'd still be in Railgate? For the murder of innocent civilians? Damn right. Who murdered innocent civilians? Peter. The war criminal? He's here? Literally. That was him. Really? Not what I expected. I thought he'd be more... Menacing? He just seems sad. Who wouldn't be after spending 15 years? Hang on, how come you don't recognize him? He would have been in Railgate at the same time as you. What can I say? I never saw him. How's that? <laughs> Whoops! Damn it, Morty! Terrence said the fat controller was fuming and sacked him on the spot. Good rinse to useless rubbish, I say. I met Sir Tobin back once when he was chairman. I never imagined he'd wind up becoming Sordor's controller. None of us did, Brian. So this is the famous Brian. All right, Edward, what have you told them? The truth, that you saved the lives of over 200 people. Did he now? You haven't heard about that? No, matey, but I do love a good story. Well, here it is. The year was 1915. Edward, no offense, mate, but can you cut to the chase? I think Salty could benefit from some background. A dopey signalman nearly caused an accident. There you go. You have no flair for storytelling, Bruce. Is that what happened? Well, yes, but as I was trying to say... Actually, on second thoughts, why don't you tell it, Brian? Um, all right. Here goes.
All right there, Edward? I am now. Good show, Brian. Well done. Bloody hell, that was close. You all right, Adam? I'll live. What happened? Why were you on our line? Because the signal was down. Damn it, Jeffries. I'm not Jeffries. He called in sick. I was filling in. Oh dear. I'm in trouble, aren't I? Bloody oath, mate. They'll throw the book at you. You'll be lucky if they- Oi, keep it down. By all the saints. It's bad enough you nearly smashed up my shop. Now you have to go creating a row? We're sorry, sir. Excuse our intrusion. No, I won't. You frightened my customer. I'll teach you. What did he do? I think he would have lathered up our faces with shaving cream, but he never got a chance to. Why not? Because I was the customer. Well, as I live and breathe, Jackson Bailey, is that you? Hello, Brian. Welcome home. I always knew you'd come back. You haven't changed a bit. Time hasn't been so kind to me. Rubbish. You haven't aged a day. You were one of the best workers we had on the WNS. I'll never forget the time you caught those boys who threw rocks through all the windows of our coaches. You gave them such a hiding. They deserved it. Funny I can't muster that same gumption towards my own grandson. You have a grandson? Did you get married again? Again? How many times have you tied the knot? One too many, Bruce. One too many. Ah, Judy calls. I better go. Nice seeing you again, Brian. You too, Jack. Take care. That man's a living legend, and I never knew he worked for your railway. When was that? When it first opened, he came over from the mid Soto Railway and trained up the other Fogmen. About a year later, his wife passed away. That's a sad tale, no mistake. And we were rather despondent after you disappeared. What happened? I remember you volunteering to be part of a goods train headed for Manchester because its original brake van had failed, but after you left, nothing. Well, on the way to Manchester, I was swapped over to another train that also had a dodgy brake van. Before I knew it, I was in Wales. I knocked about the coal fields until the end of the war before making my way to London. When the Big Four came about, I began working for the Middies. I served all over the city and outlying areas until the second war to end all wars started. And then... I don't really know. What do you mean? I was in a pretty bad accident. It was so bad I actually have a large gap in my memory. I remember being in London during the Blitz, then nothing until I woke up in a workshop after the accident. That was two years ago. Bust my buffers! That's no gap, that's a chasm! It's frustrating is what it is. All those experiences gone. But I never forgot about any of you. Neither did your mates. Colin, Adam and Lily talk about you all the time. They did? Oh, bless them. I wish I'd done more to stay in contact, but I was so busy I never had the time. So how did you end up here? Ever since the crash, I was working around the Midlands. Then one day, out of the blue, I decided I wanted to come home. I don't know why, but it was overwhelming. So I put in a request for a transfer, and here I am. And you picked a prime time to come home, old chap, given what's coming up. What's coming up? Wait, you don't mean... Godred's Day? Is that still celebrated? You bet. There's fireworks, a parade, parties, and this year being the thousandth anniversary, it'll be a massive shindig. Thousandth anniversary? You're right, Edward. I couldn't have timed that better. It's a mighty odd coincidence that two of Sodor's wayward sons have come home in time for such an auspicious occasion. Oh yes, Peter. Have you seen him yet? No, and I hope I don't for a few days. I need time to figure out what I'm going to say to him. Oh, hi Douglas. By all the saints. Hi Peter, long time no see. Yeah, real long time. How have you been? Fine, fine, keeping busy. How about you? You must be happy to be out. You can't imagine, mate. It was nice sleeping out under the stars. Under the stars? Did you spend last night outside? Yeah, I was at Arlesborough. I just wanted to be alone. Understandable. How was it? Wonderful. The peace, the privacy. I might keep doing it. I know not everyone's happy I'm back. Gordon? How'd you know? I figured he wouldn't be. He never forgave Adam after all. How's he doing these days? Oh, bollocks. Do I really have to be the one to tell him? Tell me what? Did something happen? Aye, he passed away a few years ago. He came down with metal fatigue and chose the final firing. Oh, that's horrible. He was such a good bloke. I was really looking forward to seeing him. I guess that's it for the world's worth in surgery. No, actually. A lost member of its crew came home yesterday. Lost member? You don't mean Brian. I do. He's at the rear of my train. He's a top bloke. You want to say hi? I will. Thanks. Oh, and Peter, welcome home. Thanks, Dougie. Great to be home.
Hello there, I'm Peter. Are you Brian? Um, yes. This is great. The others used to talk about you all the time. Nice to finally put a face to the... Uh, are you alright? Why do you keep staring at... Oh, you know what I did then. Well, yes. Edward and the others told me last night. No wonder you're so spooked. I'll get a move on then. No, no, it's not that. It's not entirely that. Do you have a twin brother by any chance? No. Why? Last year I was working around the Midlands and I met an engine who looked and sounded exactly like you. He called himself Alan. Really? There's another non face say f out there. They said I was the only one. If I do have a twin, I've never met him, but I could tell you that wasn't me last year. I would have been in Railgate. Aye, 15 years. I didn't think an engine could get such a long sentence. Not under British law, but I was convicted under international criminal law. Different jurisdictions, different punishments. And I deserve worse than I got. So you feel bad about it? That's good. It means you're not a monster. I don't think the families of my victims would agree. Some of my colleagues sure as hell don't. Gordon, if you're going to hate me, can you do it without being obvious? What would be the point if you already know? And I get why. I don't need to be reminded of it. Is that to say you forget about what you did? No, I never have. I've thought about it every second of every day, and I've regretted it. Good, because you're a monster, just like Adam. All right, Gordon, that's enough. Mickey? Hello, Peter. How are you? Not too good at the moment. So it seems. I'm glad I found you both together. I heard about what happened yesterday, and given what I've seen just now, I don't want this to escalate. What are you saying? I'm asking that you both come by the works later today. What for? Therapy. Whew. If anyone needs therapy, it's him. No, you both need it. This level of resentment is dangerous. We've seen what happens when it's allowed to fester. Do you really think this time will be any different? This time is different, Mickey. None of the previous rivals were war criminals. Granted, but you have issues that need to be resolved. I'm asking you to attend therapy for your own good. So how about it, lads? Are you willing to try? All right, I'll come. Gordon? Oh, fine. Great. I'll see you at five o'clock. You won't regret this. Famous last words. You think it'll do them any good? I hope so. The Chief's right. This has happened too many times and it always ends badly. And if anyone can fix this, it's him. And I trust you won't talk about anything you might hear. Of course not, Edward. Therapy is sacred in the Fire and Rescue Service. It would be deeply immoral and unethical if I gossiped about it. I'll hold you to that, old chap. This is really bothering you, isn't it? Yes, but I was actually thinking about something else just now. What Brian said about meeting Peter's twin. If it was a twin. What do you mean? One of the workmen told me about a conversation he overheard between Thomas and Sheffield, and it was... interesting. Hey Sheffield, I was thinking about what you said yesterday about not seeing Peter at Railgate, and I'm a little confused. What's confusing about it? I've been to Railgate. Back then they used to move us around a lot. Do they still do that? Yes, the inmates were rotated as new ones came in and old ones finished up their sentences. I must have seen the whole place being shuffled about. And you didn't see Peter at all. He's kind of hard to miss. You're right. That's why I didn't see him. Because he wasn't there. That's... bizarre. And I'm suddenly reminded of something Johnny Cuba said. I dismiss it as gloating, but it's too specific a detail to be coincidence. What did he say? Terence, just how wide is your network of contacts? Could they find out something on the mainland? I don't know. I've never really tried. What do you want to know? If Peter was ever in Railgate. Thank you both for coming. This is a good sign. You clearly want to resolve this. Actually, I just want tips on how to tolerate this monster. I'm not a monster, Gordon. All right, calm down. We're not here to point fingers or blame anyone. Even if the blame is justified, he destroyed a hospital, Chief. I didn't drop a shell on it for fun. The Nazis are taking it over and I wanted to drive them out, regardless of the cost. How about it, Peter? Did you think about civilian casualties? Yes. I also thought about Allied casualties. If I didn't clear them out, they could have done some real damage. Did it help? The enemy gave up. We took over the town and were able to advance. What I did might have helped the war effort, but I don't know if it was worth the cost. I can tell you it wasn't. It never is. Hang on. You said the exact same thing after- Don't you dare! Bell I'm in. That's it! You feel guilty about that! Of course I do, but that was an accident. Your actions were deliberate. Steady, lads. Let's wind this back a bit. What's Bellamin? I don't want to talk about it. Gordon, please. Maybe it'll help. 
It was one of the smaller battles we fought in Africa. I was up front armed with a cannon. I saw movement and fired upon what I thought was enemy armor. The wreckage blocked a passage the Nazis attempted to use to flank our forces. This disrupted their strategy and ended in a rout. We won. You said you thought it was enemy armor? I was wrong. It was American. The tank was utterly destroyed and its entire crew killed. The incident was ruled friendly fire and I was cleared of any wrongdoing. Even so, I felt guilty about what happened. I still do. Do you think maybe you're projecting that guilt onto Peter? I... don't know. Then how about we explore that further? I remember that all too well. Gordon was beside himself for weeks afterwards, and we don't need his business bandied about. Sorry, I couldn't help it. I'd just woken up. It's all right, but don't mention it to anyone else. I won't. Mum's the word. Very good. How's your valve gear, by the way? A lot better. Ugh, but that green water can be rough to shake off. Who do you think makes that stuff anyway? Black water too. Where's it come from? That's a good question. I've never thought about it. It feels like they've been around for a long time. Oh, they have. We had a few barrels on the WNS the day we opened. Back then, Brendan Docks was little more than a lone pier with a single station. But we're not here to talk about my stories. Carry on with yours, Douglas. Right. So the moment Thomas Oliver Toad and I tried to make a break for it, we were spotted. In a heartbeat, we had German engines hot on our heels. They were massive machines. Would have torn us to pieces if they caught us. For a moment, it looked like they would. But as we rounded one last bend, we heard it. Bang! Then there was the whiz of a passing shell, and the jetties were blown to smithereens. Our platoon had found us, and we were rescued. Shiver me timbers, matey! How exciting! It wasn't so much so at the time, laddie. I know you said Oliver was there because he ran out of fuel, but what was he doing before that? We don't know. He couldn't tell us. Classified. Maybe we'll find out someday. What about you, Brian? Care to share anything about your travels? I'd love to. Since we're trading war stories, I may as well start with the Blitz on London. That must have been rough. Aye, every night, sirens and explosions. Every morning, destruction and death. They hit the rail yards especially hard. A lot was destroyed. So many engines and rolling stock were lost. It's a miracle you survived. I didn't. I was hit by a bomb and died. What kind of a sick joke is that? Honestly, I never thought... Brian, are you listening? Wait, what? I said what kind of a sick joke was that? It wasn't. What? Edward, I died. I was struck by a bomb. I saw it coming. I couldn't do anything but scream. It landed right on top of me. I remember it breaking through my roof. I felt it explode inside me. Then I was... Wait, Colin, Lily, Adam. I, I saw them. We were together. Then... They were gone. No, I was. I was back in London, on the exact spot I died. Hang on, the gap in my memory. I don't have amnesia. I don't remember my life because I didn't have one. I was dead. No, this is wrong. I shouldn't be here. Why am I here? What's going on? That was scary. I think we can safely assume he's not having us on. Not with that reaction, no. Then are we to believe he's come back from the dead? Around here, Salty, that's not unheard of. <sighs> How's he doing, Mickey? Better. We've given him some green water and he's resting comfortably, but I'm baffled by what he's saying. His physical condition also raises a lot of questions. Why? For a brake van pushing 80, he's in phenomenally good condition. Given the wear on his buffers and wheels, it's like he's only been in service for two years. He did say he had an accident around that time. Could he have been rebuilt? Maybe. I put in a request for his service record. We'll see what they did to him. What can you do for him in the meantime? Therapy. Hopefully we'll get to the cause of why he believes he died. If that doesn't work, I don't know. I really don't know. Fortunately, it would work, though it was a difficult process. Brian asserted he had died right up until Mickey showed him his service record. Aside from detailing the extensive repairs he had undergone, it contained a detailed account of his activities throughout his supposed death. This shook the poor chap to his core, for he was certain he had seen his late friends. Mickey theorized it could be a symptom of his amnesia. Maybe he was told about their passing and constructed an elaborate fantasy as a coping mechanism. Perhaps he felt guilty that he survived whereas they didn't. After accepting this possibility and with intense therapy, he was able to recover. He's still in use to this day and is one of the best workers on the island. And 
he would share many stories about his travels, I'm also very pleased to say Gordon and Peter made great strides in repairing their friendship. There was no more fighting or bickering, save the occasional work-related squabble. Peter slowly resettled back into working life. He was reacquainted with old friends and made new ones. As for the possibility he might not have been in Railgate, by all accounts, he was. Terence's contacts actually reached the prison, which handed over his records. If they can be believed, he served his entire sentence therein. Sheffield might not have seen him, but that doesn't mean he wasn't there. And regarding his supposed twin, maybe he was the one whom Johnny Cuba boasted about taking out, or maybe he had been lying. I did speak to Peter about it, and he swore he had been inside the whole time. With no evidence to the contrary, I decided to drop it, and wrote it off as an anomaly. Oh, and if you're wondering what happened with Daisy, I let her down easy. She was very understanding and apologetic. As for Boko, in his new condition, he excelled on the main line as a mixed traffic engine. Godred's Day soon rolled around, and it was a massive affair, filled with fun, fireworks, and festivities. A few weeks later, the Waterton branch opened to similar fanfare. A few days before that, its extra engines arrived. Who were they? Well, there's a reason why the line is better known these days as the Little Western. But those are stories for another day. Groven calls! Croven? Is this place named after an owl? Not quite. Croven's gate was a castle held by a nobleman loyal to Kaldi. His name was Croven, and he was supposedly a wizard. During the war with Godred, the castle was taken, and Croven fled by transforming into an owl, but it said he couldn't change back. So he became... An immortal owl? Aye, sounds a bit silly, doesn't it? As a whole, I've always been skeptical of the legend of King Godred. There's no harm to it, Duncan. I know, I'm not trying to spoil anyone's fun. And I think it's good we emphasize it as a legend instead of history. Maybe we'll see for ourselves this Godred's day which one it is. What do you mean? You know how the legend says Godred vanished? Well, there's actually a prophecy that says he'll one day return. It doesn't say when, of course, but since this year is the 1000th anniversary of his disappearance, there are those who feel that's when it'll be. And then what? He'll take back his kingdom? I don't know. I doubt anything will happen. But you never know on this island. There are two things we do know. That owl is never wrong, and Old Bailey will be out there when the fog rolls in. I've been meaning to ask you about that, Duke. Remember how you said they were calling him Old Bailey back when you were young? Were you being serious? Duke? What's wrong? Uh, I was joking at the time, but now that I think about it, it's true. Really? Yes, and our line opened back in 1880. That was 84 years ago. Does that mean he's over 100? Even then, he could have only been in his 20s. That's not old by any stretch. And there's no chance he was in his 20s back then because he looks practically the same as he does now. Has no one ever asked him his age? Many times, he's always answered with old. Maybe there's more to it. Great, that's just what we need. Another mystery. I'm sorry, sir. All trains have been cancelled due to the fog. Good thing I'm not here to catch a train. I beg your pardon? Jackson Bailey? Yes. Do I know you? No, but we've been looking for you for a very long time. We? Oh, I see. You're the same tosspots who killed Croven. Groven? The Nar Twin. Did you know he was the last of his kind? So it is you. What are you talking about? Wait, I know you, don't I? Let's talk about this somewhere else. Come on, if you think I'm going anywhere with you, mate, you're mistaken. Don't make this harder than it has to be, Mr. Bailey. Or would you prefer your majesty? It's been a long time since anyone called me that. Who are you? 